Hey everybody, it's Friday, yay! Woo! Today we're gonna talk a little bit about our experience with our two kids in the hospital when we had our kids and just kind of like things we learned would change with this next pregnancy, labor, and delivery. They have to be things we would change. Mine are just kind of things I learned. Yeah, either things that you would like changed or you learned that you like want to remember for the next time. So one thing that I really want to, like the number one thing that I want to work on because Piper's delivery was a lot more painful than Porter's. And so I was in a lot more pain, but I wasn't ready for it with Piper's. And so this time around, I want to make sure that I tell the nurses who are working with me, like how I want to become like, how I want to be standing or sitting so they strap you up to all these monitors baby monitors they have your IV in and all these things and you're laying like on your back in a bed and so it's just totally uncomfortable trying to get through your contractions if your epidural hasn't happened yet so this time around I'm gonna tell them what I want in the situation which is going to be um, I just want to be able to either be standing or be able to move around maybe sit on like a ball or something or be able to sit up somehow it it's hard because I know it's good and all those things are, are good. Like Porter's heart rate kept dropping during every contraction and so they gave me some oxygen to help him, which I'm very grateful for, but at the same time, I just want to work with them and I just want to take more control of this delivery as far as that goes. One thing that I've learned and I want to make sure I remember is just that it's like normal for like little things not to be right. And that's like why the nurses and doctors are there the whole time. Yeah. And so like, with with we've had super like pretty normal everything so yeah, far, but like a, a part of the whole delivery thing is it's a huge traumatic experience for both mom and baby, and dad, and so it, I mean there's just a lot going on and a lot that can go wrong, and so just kind of like to not like freak out. Things will happen. Oxygen levels will drop. Mm -hmm. C sections might be necessary, but hopefully you're in a place where you can trust the nurses and doctors. Something that I just wasn't aware of when I went in for Porter's delivery was that like your body kind of goes into shock with all these things that are happening and I think that's what this is. And so like you kind of shake and like shiver. After Porter it was like really bad, like I couldn't control. So I had to like really control my breath and the, the blood pressure thing wasn't like working because I was so tensed up because I was shaking so much. Anyway, that's not something I can really change or whatever but I was, wasn't aware of it. I, so I, I wasn't aware of it. So if you didn't know that, that might happen. Totally normal. It's just kind of a little shock issue. So I have one <clears throat> just dealing with like use of cell phones and stuff like that. People were constantly texting like, what's going on? What are updates? And it's, and, and if you let yourself, you'll be on your phone the whole time while yeah. this whole process is going on. And so this with Piper, I think we like, we caught on and like figured it out. And I remember I like, I don't think I was even on my phone at all, which I'm very happy about. Except which you is were rare. writing down our own. Well, that's that's a different that's a different okay. thing. But it, I was able to be like present, and I think that's important too. That like people know are, are going to want of all, all the details of, of what's going on, but like they want like really you're play gonna, by play. Yeah, you're going to miss out on the whole thing if you're constantly giving other people updates. Maybe. The most important part is for you to just be present and not worry about. Telling updating everyone your, about your, it. Your, like every family member what's yeah. going on. It's just like you be present and then after the fact you can tell them the whole story yeah. and do whatever. I think it's okay periodically to like send one out like for big updates, but you don't need to be like responding to every single text and stuff. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Anyway. But tell them about like what you do, what you did for Piper like on Piper, I just took notes on my notes app and my, on my iPhone just of Times what, what time we got to the hospital and when we left the house and just do the time so you know because everyone's like what time did you go in and what time did this happen and how long did it take you how long was your delivery yeah how long did you push if you have like it's such a crazy world and especially if you go in like in the middle of the night just to write down the times is helpful for later documentation I don't know every, every hospital is different but for me if they offer to take the baby to the nursery at night um and keep them all night and if you're like good with formula and like letting them feed the baby formula I am like definitely going to do that because your sleep time at the hospital is super important before you go home let the nurses help you out and I know it's like a brand new baby and you want to like soak in all that time but after delivery you're so tired so tell people no they can't visit tell the nurses yes take your baby and just sleep 
while you're at the hospital with like a million people there ready to help you. During the delivery, I knew I wanted to do this. I wanted a mirror <laughs> and like a lot of girls or people just get grossed out by that, but it was super helpful for me because I could like see the baby coming out and it was really motivating because I can see like when they get close or when they like come back in. <laughs> anyway, I really like the mirror. If you didn't know that was a possibility and you think you might like it, just try it out because it might work for you too. It's really good. Um, another tip slash thing I learned. The, so the first time with Porter, the doctor stitched me up because I tore a little bit, um, but he didn't like talk me through it. And then the second time with Piper, Oh, did I not tear? I don't think I tore with Piper, mm -mm. but he was still a lot better. So just about just explaining like, what's going on and yeah. what's going on down there. Like it's like... so confusing, and there's so many things happening, like when your your placenta coming out or whatever. If you're like me, I I want to understand things more, and so I'm definitely like if I want to know like the details of where the stitches are, so that when I'm at home and I'm trying to like heal and recover, I can know myself. Like I can know my body after the baby, mm -hmm. which is kind of a big thing. And I, you remember with Porter, I was like asking the nurses everything that was going on, like what the different machines did and why they were doing this and this and how it measured it. And I think they like it. And honestly, like it's a service business. Like they're, they're providing a service to you. And so they give you better it's customer service too. If like you're engaged and like curious yeah. and stuff, that's, that's something. And I once found. they that's know that you like it. to be informed, they'll like For keep sure. you informed. And so, yeah, I, I was asking the nurses everything and they were so fun and cute and stuff so. so one funny part about Piper's my labor with Piper was that I was in a lot more pain than I had been with Porter and I was just very vocal about it that kind of got the brunt of it <laughs> like we hadn't with Porter we hadn't gone through this and so he didn't really know and I didn't know how like what Zach's role was in my contraction dealing with my contractions with Piper Tara was just like it just, just like in the movies more. when like you know the the like, wife in labor is like yelling, yelling at you you did this to me I, I didn't say that. she didn't say that but it was like that kind of anger and, and I was like, like help me she's like do something Zach don't just stand there and I was just like I don't know what to do like if I touched her back she's like don't, don't touch my back like and like <laughs> okay I'm trying to do something like you're saying but nothing is right and like I would say something and like she's like don't say that she, and he would ask so me mad. like how how are you how are you and I'm like don't ask me how I am, tell me I'm doing good. <laughs> so anyway, maybe if your relationship is similar to this, just talk through it. Maybe and have well, a game plan a little bit. And I don't I don't think that necessarily, but just I like I don't wish we would would go to one of those classes where they you guys, the husbands or partners learn how to like <coughs> massage backs or good like pressure points that would help and things like that. Like we were already planning on getting an epidural and so you forget that there's like Contractions that happen in order to get you to the point of an epidural. Yeah, I think just men need to be beware or be yeah, aware. Yeah, and be very like... concerned. Like, don't <laughs> laugh when your husband, when your wife is yelling like a crazy person. Did I like, laugh? Well, I could tell you thought it was kind of funny. I, I mean, it was. Were, I thought you were acting ridiculous, and honestly, I still kind of feel this way that you were like getting a kick out of it. Well, yeah, a see, bit. and I wasn't. I mean, I thought it was funny, but it's what I, it's what my body wanted. <laughs> it was like, yeah. I don't know what that tip was, but this time around, I still don't know. We gotta talk about it. We gotta figure it out. Well, I don't, like, how are you gonna control that? Like, you can't tell yourself, just be happy and, and don't, don't oh, yell no, at your husband. it's not about me. I it's know. about you. It's all about his duties, what his duties right. need to be. Either way, it'll help us both be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, last of all, the special time between, like, the beginning of your delivery, labor delivery, and, like, when you go home with your baby is, like, the best, my, like my favorite memories of all, like my favorite memories in the whole world. Like you being off work or whatever and being with this new little person that was just inside of you and now they're outside of you. <laughs> and it's the best and so just enjoy it. Enjoy like the, the quiet and that time. The sounds and the smells and the little yeah. baby, not like the good smells, like and the like little new clean. The awkward clean. diaper changes <clears throat> and if you can, I know we've had very, very good and easy delivery, so I know it's not like that for everybody, but enjoy the time as much as you can because it's super special. Would you agree? I agree. <laughs> but yeah, so that's those are some tips and memories and things that I'm going to change for this next delivery, and we'll see how it goes. We'll have to do like an after one 
and talk about these same things and see like how it went. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks for watching, guys. We hope you have a great Friday and weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, real quick, I guess, before we end. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the first of the year. And that's like 3,000 subscribers away. <laughs> but with your guys' help, sharing, liking, subscribing, um, if you haven't subscribed, just click the red button below. If you're somewhere like on Facebook watching this video, click over to YouTube. It's just a, it's through your Google account. And so you just sign into your Google Gmail account if you have one, and that's your YouTube account as well. Um, so subscribe and help me get to 10,000 subscribers. It's a big number, but I think we can do it. I think so too. Anyway. This is really the end. We'll see you on Monday. See ya. Bye.